What is the perfect OG? A question that's been coming up a lot lately is what is the perfect specific gravity? Okay, spoilers, there's no such thing, but let me explain why I'm saying that. Um, a lot of people have been saying, oh, I started at 1.096 or I started at 1.118 or I started, you know, whatever the number is, is that good? There's actually very little information there for me to be able to help. Now, let me explain what that means. If you just tell me this is what my gravity was when it started, my specific gravity of my must before it started fermenting, that doesn't tell me enough information to say if that's appropriate or not. I'll never say it's like, it, you can't, it's so hard to say that it's good or it's perfect. You can't have a perfect. There's target OG, but to say good or bad, the only way it can be bad is if it's so high that it can't ferment, or it's so low that it won't create enough alcohol for what you're trying to do. So let me explain. Let's say, for example, you're using a yeast that has a 13.5% tolerance, okay? Just for easy numbers, 13.5% alcohol tolerance. What that means is at 13.5% alcohol in the must, those yeasters are gonna, around that number anyway, they're gonna say, nope, we don't want to make any more alcohol. Think of it like this. You're in a pool, right? And I used poop in a pool once before, and someone said pee in a pool is actually a better analogy, so I'm gonna go with that. You're sitting in a pool, right? It's a big Olympic-sized pool. At the other side of the pool, some kid pees in it. You don't even know. But if 20 people standing around you started peeing in the pool, you might notice. At some point, it's gonna hit the tolerance level for you that you say, nope, I'm getting out of the pool. There you go, that's alcohol tolerance for your yeast. Same concept. The yeast are in there, they're swimming around, they're consuming sugars, they're making alcohol and CO2. And then they start to realize, hey, wait a minute, everybody around me is doing the same thing. There's an awful lot of alcohol and CO2 in here. I don't like this anymore. Now they sometimes go dormant, they other times can die depending on the actual levels of the alcohol in the must. So if you know the tolerance of your yeast, which it's really easy to find out, Google Foo is your friend. Just go onto Google and search for yeast type, alcohol tolerance, comes right up. I don't know why they don't put it in the packets. Some companies do, but very few, okay? So it's one of those important things. By the way, if you're curious what I'm drinking, this is from our fastest meat video. It's actually quite nice. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I wanted to tell you about the City Setting VIP Club. It's a super friendly bunch of brewers who get together and constantly help each other and share information. A large part of it is our private Facebook group where you can ask questions and get help. We also have Zoom meetings monthly for most tiers of membership. These hangouts are a great way to ask questions or just hang out with us and the other members. In addition, the higher tiers get their names right in our videos. So consider becoming a VIP. Now back to the video. That is your base. So if you know your alcohol tolerance, right? you know that that's the maximum that you can go to before the yeast start to say, I don't know about this. Before you think that it's okay to try to overshoot that and get sweetness. That works sometimes. It's inconsistent and it's inefficient. And let me explain why. If you go above that, you might stress your yeast. They could stall out bef long before you want them to, or they can produce off flavors, they can make it t smell funky, they can make it take a lot longer to age. Bad things can happen. I would much rather say, okay, my yeast has a 13.5% tolerance. Let's make 13%. That way I know it's below the tolerance, it should finish dry. I can always back sweeten it to taste and pasteurize it to finish. Easy peasy, right? That's the way we like to do things, really, really simple. So if someone was to say to me, my initial gravity was 1.090, is that good? Well, that depends. Are you using a 10% yeast, a 13% yeast, a 15% yeast, an 18% yeast? Are you making a beer? Are you making a wine, a cider? What is your initial idea of what you want this to end up as? A little bit of preparedness, a little bit of planning as to what you want that brew to be can go a long way towards deciding if that's a good original gravity or not. There's no such thing as a perfect original gravity. And something else that comes up a lot is like, say we hit 1.102 in our original gravity in the specific recipe. People have freaked out when they were like two or four points away, literally like 1.104 instead of 1.102 and they're freaking out. I'm like, nah, I don't think I could hit it the same twice in a row exactly every time. Don't worry about it. A few points doesn't mean a thing. It's when our original gravity was 1.100 and yours is 
1.200. That's where you might have a problem. If your hydrometer wants to jump right back out of the test tube when you drop it in there, you've probably gone too far. Just say it. Now, on the other end of the scale, you can go too low, but it's harder to go too low. Too high is easy, because if you go too high, you're killing your yeast, you're making off flavors, it's, it's not gonna ferment properly. But too low just means you're making less alcohol. So it's already gonna be dry at the range that we say, it'll just be a little more dry, or the same dryness just with a little bit less alcohol. That's not really a problem. You can always step feed if you wanted to, to get a little bit more alcohol into there. We do have a video on step feeding coming out really soon. Or you can just sweeten to taste as you want to, or don't even worry about the alcohol. Because here's the thing. If you hand somebody a glass of something that's 9% and hand them something that's 10%, I don't think very many people are gonna be able to tell the difference. And if they can, well, good for them. But in reality, most people can't tell the difference. And like I always say, instead of shooting for that 18 or 20% alcohol range, which is actually hard to do and make it taste good, shoot for 10 or 12% and have two glasses. So much easier to do. So what is this whole video about anyway? Basically, it's to say, if you are looking at making a must and you don't know if your original gravity is in a good range, the things to check are, What's the tolerance of my yeast? Am I within that range? Am I below what the yeast can make as a potential alcohol? And two, am I living up to what I expect my brew to be? In other words, if you want something that's 12 or 13%, is it, do you have enough gravity there to make 12 or 13%? That's really all it comes down to. So there is no perfect specific gravity. It depends on what you're making because a range for say, a wine or mead could be anything from 1.030 on the very, very low end, all the way up to 1.120 or a little higher if you're really making a super heavy sack mead. So that's a wide range and they're all appropriate given certain circumstances. For a cider, pretty much the same idea, 1.020 or 1.030 up into the 1.07, 1.080 range. Cider and wine, it's a fine line. I don't even want to get into it, but it's a fine line. And then you have beer. Beer is much like cider in that respect. It's gonna be a little bit lower starting gravity, but there's a range of what's acceptable and appropriate. So to say perfect, there's no such thing, but there is wrong. <laughs> Way too high is a real problem. Way too low is less of an issue. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you see a target gravity of 1.100 and you overshoot it by too much, that's bad. If you undershoot it by 10, 20, 30 points, probably not even an issue. If you have any questions on this or you need more explanation, please ask in the comments below and I can make another video further explaining each piece of this video if we need to, but just, just ask below. And um, as always guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.